All right, so it's almost there. The first thing that you need to do is get your fruit up to a hard boil, which means it's a boil that cannot be um, erased, I guess. It, it's not, when you stir it, it's still gonna be there boiling. Um, we're almost ready for it. It's looking pretty good. So once we reach that hard boil, you want it to boil for about one more minute after that. Um, sometimes you need to go a little bit longer if it's just not looking like it's gelling. Um, just keep keep it boiling what, if it's not thick, I guess I should say. If it's not thickened at all, then you want to just keep going. Just keep boiling it down a little bit longer. Um, okay, so see all this foam? Uh, you can also take that foam off. I don't mind it. It doesn't hurt anything. It just changes the appearance of your jam. So if you don't like that foam, you can either add like a teaspoon of butter and the butter will help to disperse the foam. Or you can simply uh, kind of take a spoon and, and sludge it off. So, or you can be like me and <laughs> if it doesn't bother you, then you keep it on there and you just go ahead and jar your jam like that. Okay, so this is a hard boil. So now I'm going to set my timer and this is where the mess starts to happen. Um, it's always a good idea to wear an apron. There's a big strawberry there that did not get smushed. Okay, see, you're gonna start seeing splatters happen all over the place. Okay, so once that timer beeps, I might go a little bit longer. I might go about a minute longer than this. It's still pretty soupy, um, a little bit too soupy for my likes. So I will probably keep this boiling for another minute or two and then um, we'll come back. All right. Okay, so I've added my sweetener. I've tasted it. Um, be very careful when you taste it because it is very hot. <laughs> but this looks good to me, okay? So the pectin is what helps it to um, gel. If you are not using pectin, you're going to need to reduce it a lot more. All right, so these are ready. I have my canner is starting to heat up and see that. So now I am going to do is start ladling my jam into my jars. And then once they are all set and I've cleaned the rims and everything, then we can start putting the jars into the canner. All right, I'll meet you back in just a second.
Okay, we are set up for the um, jarring. So you see that I've got my ladle right here. I have my um, funnel, my debubbler, and my jars. Everything has been cleaned and sterilized. So we're just going to bring this a little closer. See how hot that is. Ugh. Don't want to splash that on yourself, trust me. Okay, so this is all you're doing is you're ladling carefully into these jars. And for jam and jelly, you want a quarter inch headspace. So it goes up almost to the very edge of that jar. Typically, a quarter inch, you can tell it by this thread right here. Okay, so this is going to be kind of like your your uh, quarter inch head space mark. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and ladle those and I'll meet you back in a second. Okay, so I got all four jars ladled. Now you just take a hot, damp rag and just wipe the rim. It's super, super important to wipe the rim and to make sure that it's all clean. You don't want anything under that lid once you seal it because it won't seal and then um, it's not the end of the world you'll either have dinner or new jam or whatever that night or that week or you can reprocess so it's not the end of the world but it is annoying when you have jars that don't seal um, but it's going to happen at some point Everybody has had it happen, and you just learn to deal with it. Okay, all my jars have been wiped. Everything is clean. We're all good to go. And the last step is just to take your deep bubbler and make sure that everything is in the proper headspace. <laughs> Make sure you're in the proper headspace for this, right? That's funny. Um, okay, so. There we go, okay. All of my jars are ready. Everything has been wiped down. Everything has been debubbled. We have all the proper headspace and they look beautiful. All right, the last step is to take your lids. Okay, these are the lids. They've all been washed and cleaned. All right, so I just have to say that these, this Hugs Kitchen, I got these on Amazon. These, oh, see, that one's not clean. You don't want to use that one. Um, those Hugs are awesome. I love and they come in pretty colors so it just makes it fun but they have always sealed really well for me I've never had any trouble with their seals and um, they're not that expensive alright so this is a super important step is with the band okay or the ring so these can be used over and over and over again until they get too rusty or um, you just have too many of them and you want to get rid of them and throw them away. So 
this lid is going to be put on first, then you're going to take the ring and just um, seal it a little bit. And then once it starts to get a little tight, you just take it a little bit more to fingertip tight. If you tighten it too much, then air cannot escape out of the jar and it won't seal properly and you'll get either a non-seal or you're gonna get um, like a domed lid, which you don't want either. So that's the trickiest part, learning how to properly finger tight tip, fingertip tight seal your lids. Um, but you'll get it, you'll get it. Just remember don't do them too tight and don't do them too loose. Just right. All right, so once I have all these sealed fingertip tight, I will show you the next step. Okay, all these are fingertip tight. Now, jam jars are extremely hot, so I always put these in with my jar lifter. So, I'm just gonna go ahead, put these all in. My water is not boiling. You don't want it to be boiling. You wanna bring it up to temperature slowly. All right, so everything is in there. Everything is ready. The water's hot, hot water, hot jars, cold water, cold jars. That's what you always wanna remember. If you put something in cold, you need to start with cold water and a cold canner. If you put in hot things, then you wanna make sure that everything is hot. Hot jars, hot canner, hot water, all of that. Otherwise, you're going to get jars that crack. And that's nobody, nobody wants a jar that has cracked because then you lose the food and you lose the jar. So the next step is to make sure that I put um, olive oil around the ring of my jar, or sorry, not my jar, my canner. So around this lip, I, I need, because it's the all American and it's a metal to metal seal, I need to put olive oil along that to grease it up a little bit so it doesn't stick. Okay, so the next step was to put on my lid. Now, with this one, we are not going to be building to pressure, but you still wanna make sure your lid is sealed and seated on properly. So, again, with the All-American canner, I'm just going to seal it like this. So I tighten down my screws, my lug nuts, whatever they're called. So there's six of them. Gonna make sure everything is still properly aligned. Okay, once those are done, I'll bring you back. Okay, so everything has been put down, everything's been tightened. Um, now, this is my vent. It's very hot, don't touch it. <laughs> so this is where our steam is going to start coming from. Um, you can kind of see it's starting to spit a little bit. Um, that means it is hot in there. Oh, there it goes. So we know that it's close to starting to steam. Uh, when we start the timer, we're going to be canning this for 10 minutes. Once we see a bunch of steam, it's kind of like a geyser of steam coming out of that vent, that's when we start the time for our jars. That's when we start the 10 minute countdown. Now, typically, when I am using my pressure canner, I'm going to be using this. This is my weighted gauge. Now, this one, because we're not pressure canning, we're steam canning, this is not gonna go on to that vent and close it up. So then, because that vent is not sealed, we are going to never come up to pressure. It's not a pressure canning session, okay? So there's no pressure whatsoever in this canner at the moment. It's just going to be steam. So we are going to slowly build steam up until it is spurting out of that uh, vent at a steady pace and that's when we're going to set the timer. So I'll meet you back in a few minutes and show you what that looks like. Okay, 
we are about there. I'm going to turn you around so you can see what it looks like. I'll be right. Okay, hold on. All right, let's see. You can kind of see the steam coming out. Okay, like that. Hopefully you can see it. Now, that is almost ready. I'm gonna give it about one more minute and then it should be ready. But this type of steam that you see right here is getting close. Okay, just thought I would share that. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. This constant steady stream of steam coming out. See how it's nice and steady? Except when I show you, right? Okay, right there. That's what we want to see. So at this point, we can go ahead and start our timer. So again, for this jam, we're going to time for 10 minutes. So we're going to keep letting the steam set the timer for 10 minutes. And after beeps, because this is a steam canner and not a water bath canner, we want to keep that lid closed for another five minutes. If it was a water bath canner, you could go ahead and remove the lid. You're actually supposed to. So if you are using a water bath canner, you want to remove the lid and let it sit for five or 10 minutes. Since it's a steam canning process, we are going to keep the lid sealed and closed for another five minutes. And then once that five, extra five minutes goes, then we can go ahead and unscrew the lid and take the lid off and remove the jars. All right, so see you in about 10 minutes. No, sorry, 15 minutes. Okay, so our timer just beeped and I've unlocked the screws. So let's go ahead and Okay, so always lift the lid away from you because that steam is super duper hot. Okay, so there are the jars. I'm gonna get my handy dandy jar lifter. And you don't want to tip these as you carry them. I know that there is going to be some water on the lid, um, but that should just steam away, okay? Because those lids are extremely hot, so the water won't be staying around for too long. If there's a lot of water, then you can go ahead and very, very gently take a towel and dab it up a little bit. But you don't want to use any pressure if possible because that pressure could illegitimately seal your lid um, and you don't want that because if you have a false seal then um, your food could go bad so you want to just make sure at the end of 24 hours um, that your jars have legitimately sealed. Um, sometimes you're going to hear a ping, sometimes you're not, and it doesn't really matter. It's just fun to hear the, the seals. So like this jar has a decent amount of water, so I would very gently just kind of dab at it to try and get that up, but this towel is not absorbing anything, so that's not going to work. All right, so now um, we wait. So you can see all four jars are going to be super hot. They look absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to try it. Um, so the next step is that you're just gonna let these sit for t about 12 to 24 hours. Do not move them, don't mess with them. I've told my kids, don't look at them, don't touch them, don't think about them. <laughs> just leave them alone because um, you just don't want them to be in any way um, inhibited or touched or damaged from sealing. You just want everything to go smoothly. So 
don't touch and put them away somewhere where they're not going to be messed with. Then at the end of that 12 to 24 hours, once they have completely cooled, then that is when you get to finally see if everything has sealed. Typically it will, but like I said, um, every canner is going to go through some canning session where not all of your jars are going to can and it's not the end of the world. You can either just reprocess it, put them in new jars, heat up your product again if it was hot, um, put them in new sterilized clean jars, and then just reprocess it. Sometimes it depends on what you are canning. It might become a little bit more mushy. If you're canning like green beans or something like that and you process it twice, the green beans might be a little bit softer, but it's not gonna hurt the product at all. Um, in the case of jam or jelly, you can certainly reprocess those or you can just use it as syrup um, if they didn't gel or if it didn't seal, then you just put it in the fridge and use that. Not a big deal. I don't know if you heard that, but one of them did ping and seal. So that's fun. Um, well, that is it. I will uh, show a video of how they sealed in the morning. And um, I hope that you have enjoyed and learned a lot from how to do your first canning session. And the next time we'll try and do some veggies. I've just been having a lot of trouble finding fresh produce lately. Um, that is quality. Um, I don't know what's going on in my grocery stores, but it's not been great. So the next time I find something to can, we'll do veggies or we'll do a meal in a jar, which is a lot of fun to do as well. Or we'll do beans, which my family is always going through and we always need. So um, also this, um, I was left with a little bit left in my, uh, in my pan. So this is just going to go into the fridge and the kids and I can eat that uh, ASAP. So happy canning. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you like my video and subscribe to my channel and please share with friends, with family. Um, this is such a wonderful way to um, provide really quality food for your family in an emergency and an off day when you don't have anything prepared for dinner then you have these or um, if you know heaven forbid something happens and we don't have a lot of access to food then this will make sure that you are able to provide food for your family so start canning and um, pick up an extra jar at the grocery store as well just to start building up your pantry all right I will see you tomorrow when we check the seals. Have a great night.